Okay, so this video is going to show you how to deal with uh, equilibrium of solutions. So the first thing you need to start learning to ask yourself is what's in the bleakin' beaker? So the first question I want to work, uh, problem I want to show you is when you have 10th molar ammonia in the beaker. So what's in the bleakin' beaker? You have to know whether this is a strong acid, weak acid, strong base, weak base, or salt, because that depends, uh, what's in here depends on what you write for your equilibrium reaction. We did, the other video showed you that we have four different equilibrium to choose from. We know ammonia is a weak base. So I don't have to think about it. Once I identify what's in the bleak and beaker, then I already know, oh, weak base, this is the equilibrium reaction that I'm going to write then. The weak base reacts with water. Water is the acid, so it donates the proton. You end up with the conjugate acid of the weak base and hydroxide ion. So once you recognize this, you can either use, use B for ammonia or you can write out the reaction with ammonia. It does not matter. You choose. Okay. So then you set up your rice table. R is the balanced equilibrium. I is the initial concentration of the ammonia. Water is a pure liquid, so we don't include it. Uh, you didn't have any of these ions initially present, so they're zero. Now, what changes? Some of the ammonia will dissociate or ionize. If we call that amount X, they're in a 1 to 1 to 1 mole ratio. So, if X dissociates, it produces X amount of that ion and X amount of hydroxide. So, at equilibrium, remember this is equilibrium, uh, you find out what you have at equilibrium simply by adding the I uh, initial and change row. So you end up with one tenth minus x, zero plus x, x, zero plus x, x. And there you have it. And this is what you base your equilibrium expression on. So now let's see how we're going to set this K up. When we're at equilibrium, we don't call it Q, we call it K. It's a base, so we give it a subscript B. It's equal to the concentration of your products, which are the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. So it's the concentration of each product raised to its coefficient, which is 1 times the concentration of the other product raised to its coefficient, which is 1, this is not 10, that's hydroxide, over the concentration of ammonia raised to its uh, coefficient, 1. So now I do not need to include water, we said, because we don't include pure liquids or pure solids in the reaction quotient. Now that I have my expression, I plug in the value of these concentrations at equilibrium. So for ammonium ion and hydroxide, I'm going to plug in X for those. And for ammonia, one-tenth minus X. Now you see if I'm just going to solve this, uh, and I look up the K value for ammonia in a table and I find it's 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 equals X squared over 1 tenth minus X. And you can see I'm going to end up with a quadratic equation. So we always try and avoid that, uh, and you will not be asked to solve uh, many, but I'll show you how to do it for a quadratic. But for this video, we're going to assume that X is very small when compared to the initial concentration of the ammonia. 
So essentially, not much of it's going to dissociate. So if I make this assumption, then one-tenth minus x is essentially one-tenth. Solving for x, which I know is hydroxide ion concentration, I end up getting the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 times one-tenth. And when I solve for that, I end up getting hydroxide ion concentration is equal to 0 0.0013 rounded to two sig figs, and that's molarity. So that's what we get if we make this assumption. Now let's check. Every time you assume this, you have to run your test. It's called the 5% rule test. So we basically take what we get for x, divided by the initial concentration, in this case it's ammonia, the little zero here means initial concentration, and we see if that is less than 5%. If it is, I'm okay to make that assumption. So I take 0 0.0013, divide by 0 0.10, which is essentially multiplying it by 10, times 100, and so you see we're going to get 1.3%. And that is definitely less than 5%. So my assumption was good. And this is the concentration of the hydroxide. Every time you assume this, once you find X, you must do your check. If it doesn't, if it's greater than 5%, you've got to go do the quadratic. Okay, so now it, where we go from here depends on the question. If you were asked for the pOH, all you have to do is take the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration and you're done. So if you did that, negative log of 0 0.0013 rounded to two sig figs, you get 2.89. So the pOH is 2.8, really 886 with a bunch of digits. For log scales, POH and PH, you don't count any digits significant to the left of the decimal. So only digits behind the decimal are going to be significant. So if you need two sig figs, there they are, six rounds the eight up. So the POH technically should be 2.89. And that would be the POH. If they asked you to find the pH of that solution, then you, you would have to find the pOH. You would have to do the problem just as we did, but instead of stopping at the pOH, you would plug into pH plus pOH equals 14. So the pH is going to equal 14 minus 2.89. So the pH is going to equal 11.11. .11. Remember, this is still two sig figs. And that makes sense because ammonia is a weak base, and so the pH should be greater than 7. And that's how to do what's in the bleak and beaker.